treatment. First of all, we're going to look at the treatment there. So treatment. Formula. There. So in the first case, we are saying the residual income is expected to persist at its current level forever. So we're saying in number one, case number one, we are saying the present uh, value and present value of continuing residual income, I'll denote it using RI, is equals to at time T minus one is given as RI, residual income at time T, this divided by R. How did we arrive at this? We are saying um, that Ri is discounted against 1 plus R. But now there needs to be a persistence factor which I was saying is going to be denoted by W. This persistence factor W over here we are saying is going to be equal to 1. Now what happens when we slot in 1 right over here? Allow me to put 1 over here. You will see this is positive 1 and this is negative 1. So it just remains as Ri discounted against R because that one and that one go. So that is what um, the analyst should be able to apply um, in the financial services industry there. If I can rub it, now we move on to the second um, treatment on based on the second assumption. Two, there. Yeah. We're seeing that the residual income is expected to drop to zero. The persistence factor in this case is zero. So we say the present value of continuing, continuing Ri at time t minus one is given as the residual income at time t discounted against one plus R. Yes, one plus R. So we are saying it's going to be Ri over one plus R minus zero. So what happens? Zero just um, um, goes away like that. So you remain with one plus R. And that's what we have um, right above over there. Assumption three now, what we're saying is that the residual income is expected to decline to a long run rate and the persistence factor lies between um, zero and one. And um, so we are saying we now be able to um, put the component of the persistence factor as like so, present value of continuing ri at time t minus one right there we can say is equals to rit against divided against one plus r minus w like that i can write it properly there excuse me minus w so we say that the persistence factor in the third assumption may lie between M0 and 1. You could be given 0 0.6, you could be given 0 0.8. So that's when now we need to include uh, the component um, of W there. there. Now moving on to the fourth assumption, we are saying that residual income is expected to decline as ROE falls. So what happens is that we have assumption number four. We say the present value of continuing RI or residual income at time T minus 1 we first of all need to compute. Now, this present value of continuing residual income, um, which is expected to decline as ROE falls, we say we have PT minus BT there. This is the market price minus the, the book value there. Then you multiply by the residual income at time T, RIT discounted against um, 1 plus R. 1 plus R there. Why? We are saying this PT minus BT um, is the PT represents the market price and the PT, how do we get the market price? So PT is given as um, um, the component of the market price and how do we get the market price? We get the book value multiplied by the forecasted present um, price to book value. So it's said this is the, just the book value, value or we say it's just BT, just say it is just BT. I'll explain all those components that are multiplied by um, the forecasted price to book value. The forecasted price to book value. Forecasted, forecasted price to book value. That's how you get um, the, the, the market price there. Remember, how do we get price to book value? 
the price to book value um, is given as price to book value um, is give, you've been given the component of the price to book value component like that um, over there so it's just the book value multiplied by that component gives you this component of the price i don't know that i'm making myself clear i'm saying the price to book value is under market-based price multiples we had done price to book value it's just the market price per share divided by the book value per share if you go to that um, lecture where i was looking at the price to book value you will be able to recall that we had said the price to book value is market price per share divided by the book value per share if you have that component given to you or price to book value ratio it will be x times over there like that so to get the market price it is just the book value multiplied by um, the price to book value component there that's what we're seeing over here to get the market price, this component here is just the book value there multiplied by the forecasted price to book value component there in terms of multiples there. And so that's what we are saying and we get as um, the market price there. And um, now to explain um, based on the point um, on, the, on the fourth assumption there that the residual income is expected to decline as ROE falls. Um, BT being the book value, we are saying that ROE is the component of return on equity. And when looking at um, the sustainable growth rate under this discounted dividend valuation, we had said the growth rate is given as B times ROE. The B times ROE is the, um, the, the, this B is what we are saying is the retention ratio. And then we are saying that the ROE is return on equity. The return on equity is given as net income over sales multiplied by sales over total assets times total assets over shareholders equity. This one, please look at that lecture where we had explained um, how to get um, the ROE under discounted dividend valuation right there. So once we have done these equations over here, all that is left is for us to try and look at an example um, so that we can be able to apply um, those um, components or that com that um, those assumptions that we just looked at um, right here. So let's look at an example. 